Hello and welcome to Eremus Soccer, where we are covering with Justin Hoyt. Hello, Justin. Uh, how's things? Good. Um, disappointed in this game, but I'm good. Uh, we are covering the Gold Cup run of Trinidad and Tobago and uh, game two against Jamaica. Um, not as enjoyable as game one. We're obviously <laughs> coming off here a 3 0 win against uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, everything looks very exciting. We've got some momentum. We know we get a point uh, with a draw here and we're in a real good spot. And um, frankly, it felt like the wheels come off a little bit to me. Uh, to me, Justin, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, it's um, as I look at it, the two, after the two results, obviously Jamaica got a great result against the US. Um, Trinidad, Got the victories what they needed in the first game. Um, I'll be honest, I'd be disappointed um, if I was a coach or as a player that um, you know the lineup kind of changed. I felt personally the lineup changed just to defend and combat against Jamaica um, rather than play in your own system and style of play. Um, and I'll be honest, I felt that, you know, playing that formation and playing that system against Jamaica played into their hands. And that's why I feel the result panned out the way it did. Uh, you don't play the likes of Molino and some of the other sh attacking threats. And um, unfortunately, the result turned out how it was. And you look yeah. at Jamaica squad, you look at Jamaica squad and you think, well, you know, you look at it, Jamaica have got a lot of. European experience more than Trinidad, you would look at it and think Jamaica should win this game. But with Trinidad's recent result um, and the personnel, they've got a good squad. And uh, unfortunately, Jamaica come out victorious with their, I would say, a European Premier League attacking threat really killed uh, the defence of Trinidad in this one, that's for sure. Well, you know, um, sometimes you say such things and you... Uh... You wonder if you're playing sort of armchair quarterback or whatever the phrase is, but there's some interesting quotes from the coach, Angus Eve, after the match, which suggests that you're right. I don't know if you've read these, but yet. his quotes after the game where we were trying to keep the game a little tight in the first half, so we could probably go and get these players on in the second half to express ourselves a little bit more. From the time the score became 3-0, I formulated a plan for the rest of the game, but unfortunately we seem to be a little bit nervous tonight. And I think names probably scared us, big statement. And we really made some bad mistakes. But all in all, I take full blame for the result because I'm the coach of the team. Um, that's an interesting one to me. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? Like in the sport of soccer, I think, you know, there's almost a disrespect of defending well. You know, and uh, people use words like park the bus and negative wording. <laughs> but, uh, it ain't that easy, man. You know, you think if it was as easy as just going and sitting in, 10 teams wouldn't have came from the away from the Etihad with a point in the Premier League. It's a very difficult thing to shut down a team. It's a very difficult thing to keep a score 0-0 zero, zero for 90 minutes. And I, I don't think you can do it on the back foot as much as people think. There has to be some pressure on the ball. There has to be some aggression. And on a psychological level, you have to send the message to your players that the objective can be attained. You know, I've, I've spoke to some yeah. high-level boxers and they said something to me that really interested me. They were like, if you want to see an average fighter, what he'll do is he'll jab and move and be cautious against a high-level opponent and he'll swing away at the lower-level opponent. But the fact is, you need to land your shots on the higher-level opponent more or you're going to get hurt uh, with a level scoreline. And you might get somewhere, but... um. Yeah, I just didn't see that. No, not at all. And we talk about parking the bus, being a bit defensive. You know the words from the coach. He knows he made a mistake. And you can see it that you felt that the names of the Jamaican team and the Premier League experience and who they are, I felt played an impact on this one. Um, I felt like they maybe showed them a little bit too much respect in that in that regard. I know if it come round again, the game probably will be different because Trinidad will be like, right, we've played against these. We know what they're like. Okay, they are in the Premier League, but um, 
we need to show our talents against them. We can't be scared. We can't just give up or just be like, okay, oh my gosh, they play in the Premier League right here, you know, yeah. and not defend properly. I showed them too too much respect. I felt that was the, that that game was. Um, yeah. but you know, the, the coach is honest, which is good from him, and I think he's obviously will learn from his uh from this game. And the players will learn from this game. It's, it's it's all about learning. It's a learning experience. And I feel the team will grow from this now. And now they're playing uh, the US side now in the next game that they have to win. It's kind of like, right, we can't show this US national team you know, who's got all the hype around them too much respect. Otherwise, you're going to get the same result you did against Jamaica. Yeah. So it's a learning curve and, and the players will learn from it. And I'm sure they'll come out a lot stronger and better for it. And just so people listening are aware who these names are, you got Mikel Antonio, just uh, won the Europa Conference League with West Ham. You got Leon Bailey um, in a fantastic Aston Villa team. Uh, Damari Gray helped Everton in that relegation campaign. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Decova reed um, at Fulham. Uh, you've got uh, Andre Blake in goal, who I think is a fantastic goalkeeper. I was actually... Keeping it. Randomly at the draft, he was picked and remember his highlight video and just it's sticking in my head. And me, I, he spent a little bit of time at Philly on and off the bench, didn't he? Behind yeah, yeah. Zach McMath. And I was surprised, but now I can see, uh, I can, you know, he looks like the keeper I thought I saw in that video. He's excellent. Um, yeah. And the changes we're talking about from Trinidad, um, we have uh, Hodge benched the left back and what looks like three centre backs here with mm-hmm. Bato, Moses, and David. Um, you got Gomez and the very impressive Alvin Jones at fullback. You got Hackshaw in center mid with a deep lying uh, Rampasad um, Garcia up front. So got pushed into a five four one. You know you could argue that Rampasad was a forward withdrawn and tried to get forward and support Garcia, which obviously didn't happen in the first half. Um, and sometimes formations are overplayed, right? You could play this formation, you could have the ball, you could get your wing backs high, and it could. Rampersad could get up and it could look more like a 3-5-2. But the fact is they were under the gun, getting shelled, and they were penned back with nine, ten men for most of the game. So um no, not a great first half. And you know, if I was a Trinidad fan, you got Alvre, you got Telfer, um, you got Molino, you got Jones, who was fantastic in the second half, all on the bench. You just wonder if you've um if you've dulled your own sword a little bit. Um, but it is what it is, right? When now we get to the game. And second minute, if there wasn't any nerd from Trinidad, and I thought it was interesting to find out they hadn't played for over a decade, and this was the first ever Gold Cup, um, Gold Cup version of the Caribbean Classical, which is a magical name. Um, second minute, David, um, he almost falls over the ball. He gets pressured. Antonio's in. Um, he plays in Reed. We smash it into the side netting. And uh, if there wasn't any nerves, there is now, right? <laughs> And then five minutes, Jamaica's in again. And uh, Hackshaw brings down, um, I'm forgetting the player, but Hackshaw drags someone down. And five minutes in, we got the midfielder who shield now a back four on a yellow card. Um, this is as bad as opening five minutes get without conceding a goal, right? Yeah, 100%, especially early on in the game. Um, as you say, it's, it's the, which is funny enough how many Gold Cups that both nations have been at. It's, it's a long time since they've played against each other in the Gold Cup. Okay, they play against each other in the Caribbean Cup and I've played in that game. It's it's great atmosphere. I played against Jamaica in Jamaica in, in that game and it's a great atmosphere, great game and, and two teams battling it out. But you could really see early on that Jamaica were putting the pressure on. Um, I would call them the Premier League front three, um, as it looked like. Dominated, um, out-muscled uh, early on and I felt that set the tone for the rest of the game. Um, I felt like you look at Bailey, you look at Antonio, and you look at uh, Damari Gray there, they set the tone for the rest of the team. And I felt like they really unsettled, sh- shook up the Trinidad, uh, Trinidad's defence. And there on, that was, a, that was the tone of the game. Um, they dominated that first one, two minutes. And after that, I felt like... That's where the nerves come, and I felt like Trinidad probably sat back and probably thought, "Oh, great, we're in for a, a tough time here." They didn't realize how far, strong, um, and dynamic the front three were. Um, yeah. And early on, they had a chance in the first two minutes, and 
after that it was uh, yeah banks against the wall for Trinidad and yeah. that's that's in the first two minutes so you you know you're thinking now that thinking oh great this is going to be a long evening that's how it felt um 13th minute we get a bit of a chance we turn the ball over high uh Garcia finds himself in possession on the edge of the penalty area cuts inside and gets uh gets bullied off a little bit by the uh center back number six Bernard and then a minute later it's a goal um I thought Jamaica did a good job, even though Trinidad had numbers deep. Leon Bailey found a lot of space between the lines, turned forward, face forward. He looked to be a chief playmaker for them. Um, gets on the ball, plays in Antonio. Antonio strong as a bull as a target man here. Back to Bailey. Um, ball to uh, wide open Gray, and it, it's a tap in, right? It's an easy goal. Um, yeah, it's an easy goal. It's, uh, it's, it's, you look at the defending, you freeze frame it in certain instances, and you can see most of the Trinidad defence, if not all of them, ball watching. Um, and if you've got quality players like Antonio, like Leon Bailey and Damari Gray, who's got the space and time, it's inevitable that you're going to get a shot and goal and, and score. Um, you can't ball watch. You can't give these players the amount of time and space. Um, not at this level. Um, and, that, and that's for sure. And um, Trinidad paid the price for that one to concede in the first goal. Yeah. And the second one, to me, is even more disappointing because you, it's very, very clear there's been discussion about the shape and I can't play this because of copyright reasons, but I'm going to share my screen for a second. And you're going to see there, you've got um, the Jamaican defensive centre mid on the ball. I believe his name was uh, Labatido, or um, apologies if I butcher that. And you look at that line of four players with Hackshaw there, you know, they're cutting off that ball into Bailey's feet. Oh, no, it's not Bailey. You're cutting off the ball here into the player's feet. we got... You know, two centre-backs to mark these guys. He's not really a threat. We've cut off every passing lane. We've gummed up the field. And we concede with a chip over the top and a straight line running behind. I mean, that's for international level. That's just not good enough, right? No, it's not. It's it's not not international level. And um, like I say, they didn't track, track the runner. Was they trying to play offside? Maybe. Was it a bit of ball watching and... Um, delayed reactions, yes. Um, but you give um players of international level that amount of time and that amount of space in behind, and you don't track your runner, it's inevitable that they're, they're going to get a chance on goal. And uh, you know, you're in good shape, but at the same time, you can't be so high um, when there's no pressure on the ball, yeah. And um, question for you here, and if young players are listening, this will be an interesting one, the level you played at. I'm a believer that you back off as soon as you see no pressure on the ball. You start giving yourself a cushion. That ball gets playing to behind. You turn and you run. I don't believe as much in the standing still with the arm in the air because I believe if it's off, it's getting given anywhere, especially here we've got a tournament with VAR and you got defenders yeah. stood still with their arms raised. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, you've always been told as well, I've always been told that, okay, you can stand there with your arms up, but at the same time, if that ball goes over, you still got to run back and defend until the referee or the linesman flags or he blows the whistle. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you both stand there with your hands up and it is given onside, you know, the player's free on goal. Yeah. If you do track the runner um, with your arms up and you still track the ball and, and it's offside, then fair enough, you've still done your job. But if you still track the player... And he's onside. You can still upset him and not give him such a free effort on goal. Um, but yeah, it, it, you have to play to the whistle. You have to to track your man, no matter what it is, no matter if you think it's offside, blatantly offside, or what. You still have to get back until that that, that whistle is blown for offside. Yeah. Twenty uh, ninth minute, goal three. Um, Fortune gets pressured by Lambert. Uh, feeds Antonio. Passes to a wide open grey. We've got men opening the 18. We've got arms in the air again. The ball goes in and just feel like all the momentum's gone now. You know, like that that 3-0 win is long in the yeah. distance in the opening game. We've got our holding mid on a uh, on a yellow. We're going to get a centre-back on a yellow 10 minutes later. Uh, half time finally arrives and Lord knows Eve will be happy to, for it to be got there, but it got some work to do in a halftime locker room here. So you're watching this, Justin, um, and I'm going to pick your brain here, and it's going to be a very difficult answer. 
What do you do about this? It's one-sided. You're outmanned. You're getting outran. You're three goals down. Um, what 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 are what are your thoughts going into the locker room here? Damage limitation. You have to try and make changes. You have to, as players, you have to go in and say, "Come on, we need, we, we know we're better than this." Um, the coach made the decision to play a certain way, but we need to be better within ourselves. You know, we've made a lot of errors defensively. We're we're not right. Um, our shape is all over the place. Um, was that due to a change in formation? I, I would guess so. Probably change of personnel. Yes, probably. Um, but as players, you've got to go into the locker and thinking, right, how can we get this one back? Um, as a coach, it'll probably be a different view. But as a player, you're thinking, right, we need to claw this one back. Let's try and get a goal and then try and build momentum from there because you get one goal you start to feel confident, you start to get the belief back and and who knows if you could score one early on and score another, um, you're right back in it. Um, the same way Jamaica scored two, three goals in, in the first half, there's no reason why I, we can't now score early on and, and change the dynamics of the game. Yeah. And he's made two changes. He's brought on uh, Javon Jones and he's brought on uh, Hodge and... You know, the Y Scout diagram saw so minor formation change into a 4 1 4 1. But again, I'm a believer in this formation, aren't aggressive without attitude no, and energy, psychology. And to be fair, they do come out with some intensity here. You know, there is a, a little shift in the game. They certainly haven't given up on their coach. Um, they're certainly fighting. And it's a strange way to show it, but Rampasad fouls Law and Law's lying down. He's trying to tie his shoelace and he's getting heat from Jamaicans, um, sorry, heat from the Trinidad players who want him to get on with the game, which I think is a great sign, actually, because any sign of these boys going through the motions, 3-0 down, lost the game, is gone. You've smashed the centre-back, he's gone down, and then you put the <laughs> pressure on him to get up and go again. Um, it's a weird way to improve your performance, but I liked it. Well, um, what do you think? No, it's, it's good. It's what you need, um, especially when you're 3-0 you're down. You need that. You need that. Is that that little spark you need to to get everyone on on the game and mindset like right we can do this let's get get on with it let's build momentum from that let's show them that we're not just um, here for the taking and, and be a bit physical because it looked like in the first half you, we got to admit it looked like Jamaica bullied the uh, Trinidad definitely and Jovan Jones uh, he's one of the guys putting heat on Law to hurry up with the game. He gets on the ball soon after, plays a couple of one-twos, drives the attack forward, it breaks it down. Um, a minute later, he's fouled. Um, I'll be honest with you, we're four minutes in here. And to me, on the attack and end, he's made more of an imprint on the game in those four minutes than almost every player, if not every player in the first half. Um, so that was a fantastic sub, I thought. What were your thoughts on the start of this second half? No, it's, it's a great it's a it's a great substitution, and that, that's what you want when you look at your bench and you go to players to bring them on at half time to make an impact, to make a difference, and to change the dynamics of the game. That's what you do, and and Joven's one of the players that can do that. Um, I've played with him, I've, I've played against him, I've seen him in training, I've watched him in in the MLS. He's a great impact player, um, a player that I thought would have started last game, would have started this game. But if you need someone to come in to, to make a difference, he's a player that, that can do that. And it kind of showed early on in this game that in the second half, when he come on, he, he did change the dynamics of the game and he did change um, the way Trinidad played. And, and that's the one player you needed to make that spot. Yep. And what do you know? 49th minute, um, we release Garcia. Uh, it's a through ball from my notes. Uh, Gomez to Garcia, skips mm. past the defender, cuts the ball back, cross, Rampasad near post, back heel finish. It's a good goal. And then uh, very soon after the goal, um, we got Leon Bailey on the ball, and he is absolutely smashed into um, by Hodge. And these boys are fired up, man. They really are. Seem like a game's bubbling away. Yeah, just just from that little spark, just from the goal, you 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 start to get a bit of belief, you know. Uh, great skill by by Levi there. Um, one v one, that's what he's good at. This is what he's shown. This is why there's one or two European clubs, as we know, uh, they're interested in, in him. 
and and that's what you need. And you know, to get a goal early on, you start to get that belief, and now you got that fighting spirit back, which they should have had in the first half in the early minutes. But it looks like early on in the second half, they've got that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the threat's still there. You know, Jamaica, 55th minute, little bit of a knife through, but to move back to front. We find Gray. He squares it to Bailey, wide open. Pretty bad miss, to be honest with you, at the back post. Um, go down the other end. There's a header wide from Rampersad. Um, it's a tough challenge, but for the first time since this game kicked off, I feel like it's alive and we're 3 1 down, which says a little bit about the one way procession at the kickoff and a little bit as to whether it was tactical or whether he moved their spirits. There was something done at even half time here that was far, uh, far better than the pre game uh, preparation. Yeah, 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 you, you see that and. Should they have approached a game like that from the beginning, from the get-go? I think so. If they would have approached a game like they started this early on in the second half, uh, it probably wouldn't have been... Trinda probably wouldn't have been 3-1 down, uh, 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 or 3-0 down at the half, sorry. Um, but, you know... They done well and, and it looked like they was gonna get back into this. They looked like they was gonna score again, although Jamaica had a few more chances. It's still you still had that feeling that you know Trinidad can do this um and, and make a great comeback of it. And then 64th minute is a real shame. We get Kevin Molina on. Um now Molina is impressive, but Ramper said was really a threat in that second half. He has to come out um with an injury. Uh it's a shame. Um a minute later, we nearly uh, get the game almost over for all intents and purposes. Um, we got uh, Gray here. He skips past two or three players. Um, he plays in... Apologies for the delay here. Plays in Shaman Nicholson, and he is denied by a, I thought, a magnificent save by Frender up uh, to keep the game alive and keep it at 3-1. Then we got Lowe, that's defender driving forward, plays to Bailey at the six-yard box. Um, there's some good pressure from uh, Moses, but he's missed again. He's missed two very good chances here in the second half, Leon Bailey. He missed two huge chances here. He could have scored a trick. Could have should have scored four. Or we um, got the golden boot by one. Yeah, he should, he should, he should have scored a few here. Um as a Trinidad player and as a Trinidad supporter, it was disappointing that he had so many chances. I'm glad he missed them because um, it could have been the <laughs> a, a, a huge defeat, um, which would have definitely dampened the spirits. But luckily for the team, he's missed them. But as a Premier League striker and him probably looking at it again, he probably be thinking, I wish I scored them and I should have scored them chances, to be honest with you. Yeah. 69th minute, weird play. Weird play, and I really thought the game was on. We got a uh, the ball smashed forward into the area. The whistle goes for a penalty. Um, I thought it could only have been for a handball on law that I couldn't see uh, with Garcia pressing him. Turns out it was given allegedly for a foul on Garcia. Um, had there been no VAR, this would have been one of the softest tournament penalties of all time, no? <laughs> and uh, the penalty's called back, so we go from... Penalty to give it 3-2 to we're back in play, but we're getting that close. Um, we're still swinging. You know, Alvarez is making an impact like he did on the last game, and Lowe ends up getting booked in the 75 minute for dragging him down. And then, um, sadly, goal four, kind of nail in the coffin, right? Yeah, it's... it's, it's, it's... It's finished, really. Um, 90th minute, you know you really lost the game. You know it's out of your reach. And um, let's just put it as a lucky deflection. I mean, you know, he just swung at it and it's hit Moses and gone in the back of the net. You're just thinking, you know... I thought that was... How, how, what, 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 what a bad way to end the game, though. Like, as, as a player and as a nation, to lose to Jamaica and then concede that goal at the end, that's... You know that, that that's that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. that's hard to take. So perspective is everything, and obviously the defense is not very good here wearing red shirts. So what if I told you, 
Trinidad parted like a Red Sea and we got a deflected goal off Moses. Would that be any better? No, it'd be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that bit out. <laughs> terrible. So now to, what? The, now to give the Jamaicans the happiness of that they scored four against uh, Trinidad. No, that's that's terrible. Yeah. So four one. All we can do is move on. You know, you've obviously I think if you look at this from a coaching standpoint, anytime you're at a tournament and you get your doors blown off, I think you know, there is a worry. Like we said in the first episode, you go back to the hotels, nobody goes home, you can't take your mind off it. Negative reactions tend to be more magnified. I do think there's some very real second half performance spikes that can keep this train together between now and the USA game. But it's a tough game. It's a really tough game. What are you thinking um, if you're coach between now and that game? It's a tough game. I mean, you know, the, the US are strong. They've got Premier League player. They've got uh, top MLS players. They've got players that are playing in Europe. It's a, it's a tough ask. But, you know, Trinidad have shocked the US before. Yes, they what have. is to say they what is to say they can't go and do it again? It's a possibility. Are they going to go defensive and show the US uh, a lot of respect? They won't. Uh, they're not. They're going to learn from their mistakes. I doubt the coach is going to go defensive. He's going to have to go out because at the end of the day, Trinidad need a result as well, which is also an interesting thing. Is how they're going to approach this because they know that they need a victory now. So they are they going to go on the attack? Which would be great to see, I would like to say, just because we've got to see Trinidad get the victory. So if they go out and try and attack um, the US, is that going to leave space at the back? Maybe. But will we see a more attacking lineup or a more attacking threat from Trinidad and and more of an attacking play like we saw against St. Kitts? Uh, that would be good to see. Yeah. Um, I think personally, you have to start Jones, given that performance in the second half. I thought he was excellent. Um, I do think there's a time and a place to go out with some caution and block the lanes and defensively. But I think given the story and the experience they're living right now to have tried that and for it to have been an absolute disaster, I think you have to swing your punches against the USA. I think you have to play Jones. I think you have to play Alvare. I think you have to bring Molino off the bench and think you have to put pressure on the ball higher on the field in the opening half hour than you did against Jamaica. Now, if that comes at the expense of getting a beating and letting three early goals in, my thoughts, that's just happened anyway. Um, so give yourself a chance. Yeah, because then if you look at if you sit back and defend and concede three goals early on, again, you're thinking, well, why did I sit back and defend? In, in, it's, it's tournament football. At the end of the day, yes, you have to show a little bit of caution uh, against the US and, Obviously, you have to show caution because you've just conceded four goals. But at the same time, it's tournament football. You have to go out and get the victory. So you have to go out and, and attack and, and and attack well and get an early goal. If you get an early goal, silence the crowd, settle your nerves. You know, you could defend the rest of the game and, and get another shocked victory against the US. That's, that, that's also possible. Or do you go out, attack, it doesn't work out. You defend really well when you score a last minute winner. Yeah. You know, even a draw, um, I think will be a great result for the for Trinidad, but it is going to be a huge ask against the I mean, US. I can't see anything other than a heavy Jamaica win against say Kits. No, Jamaica will be, yeah, they'll win that, yeah. Like draw's not enough, right? No, draw's not enough, no. Um Jamaica will win that. Um, but no, they have to win. They have to win. All right, looking forward to the game. You know, I live and coach in America. You spend a good portion of your life here. And, uh, yeah, I don't follow the U.S. national team as closely as a lot of my friends. So, looking forward to watching this game. Yeah, it's a huge game for the U.S. I, I think it's a huge game for the U.S. because of the history of what happened the last time these two nations played uh, in, a, in, a, in a major tournament. Yeah, you know, um, we played them in the hex before, and I remember the atmosphere there being crazy. Obviously, yeah. I didn't play in the game when you know Trinidad won, but there's history against the two nations now, and I'm sure the US and the US fans are going to want to show that you know it was a fluke result. 
and they're going to want to, you know, go into the next round, probably top of the table. That's what they're going to want. Um, so it's, it's going to be a tough game. It's not going to be easy. Trinidad ain't going to make it easy for them. And I'm sure the US is still going to be a bit nervous knowing what happened before. I think Trinidad, a, a chapter in US history, much like Iceland and England's, right? <laughs> yeah. England out of the Euros, like there's always yeah, going yeah, to yeah. discussion. You remember in the mm -hmm. uh, in the nineties or eighties when England lost to Norway, and it was Princess Diana, can you hear me? Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that lasted 15, 20 years, man. Every single time we played them, it came up in the conversation. Um, yeah, it was well. And I think Trinidad. I don't think the USA will kick off the game worried or whatever. But you know, you get an hour in, you get seventy minutes in, it's nil nil. Yeah, I, I do think some, you know, ghosts can start to start cycling through heads. And I think it could get interesting. I mean, my prediction is uh, probably a two or three goal USA win, uh, sadly. But if we can get 15, 20 minutes in the second half with a lead or at level, that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like you say, you... you have the right result or is zero zero or one one or you know you're leading 50 60 minutes into the game the fans start getting unsettled the u.s team if things aren't going their well starts to get unsettled and you know you, you could rattle a few feathers and, and get the result you needed mm. what you don't want is the u.s to score early um or even score 20 minutes into the game look like they're dominating the game look like how Jamaica were playing in the first half an hour and it'd be total US. That's what you don't want. Um, and because otherwise that, that's going to be a long evening for you. But it'll be interesting to see. It'll be a great game. It should be a good game. I'll say great game. It should be a good game. A uh, very challenging game for Trinidad. But can they do it? It is a tough ask, we've got to admit. But uh, the players will have belief that they've done it before. So why can't they go and do it again and, and make another name for themselves? This is a huge stage for them. They can go out and make make history and really make a name for themselves here. If they if they get the right result against the US, imagine knocking the US out now and getting the Gold Cup group stages. You know, Trinidad forever be spoken about. You know, the players who played in that game will make history for for themselves. They would be spoken about. You know, throughout, um, not just uh, on the Gold Cup stage, but you know, throughout the world, I think people would look at that result and be like, oh my gosh, the US are out and the World Cup's going to the US. So I think it's, it's, it's a huge, huge game, um, not just for the tournament, but I think other than the tournament and history and, and future in and future I tournaments. Merchandising now, Justin. Who's your Trinidad t shirts flying around? I can see it. DVD. <laughs> It's I'm going to fly, fly now. I got my Trinidad shirt. If they win, I'll bring my Trinidad shirt out. I think I've got one here, actually. <laughs> and if you don't, just bring your FC Cincinnati one. Yeah, if I got my FC, I've got my, got my FC Cincinnati ready for tonight's games. So I'm not worried about that. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to see one of your boys from Cincinnati, Brandon Vasquez. Um, he's going to be a problem, right? Big, strong, quality. Just, yeah, strong, strong like and Antonio. Probably Antonio is a bit stronger and a bit more dynamic. But yeah, we, you know. Vasquez come off the bench and and, and grab the goal uh, against Jamaica. Is he going to start this game? Maybe. I think he'll call, uh, he'll be able to unsettle uh, a few of the Trinidad defence. But it'll be good to see Vasquez. Um, he's had an up and down season so far. Not as scored as many as we thought. Uh, is at the minute, as we say in, in speculation about leaving. Cincinnati, Cincinnati are saying no. He's agreed personal terms with another team, as 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 they as they report. But I don't see Trinidad leaving. Uh, uh, Trinidad, I don't see Cincinnati letting him go yet. Me neither. So it'd be great to see. It's, it's good to see what he can do on an international stage. Um, from seeing him at uh, uh, Red Bulls, he was at. From seeing him develop from there now to playing for Cincinnati now into the men's national team. I feel like his game's developed a lot. Um, still has a lot to learn. And he's still young, so I, I guess he, he he's developing right in the in the right frame. And I think the US need a player like him in their in their front line. Awesome. Well, we'll talk about him more after the game. Been a pleasure. I believe you have an appointment with tonight's MLS. So we'll wrap this up. Thank you everyone yeah. for listening, and see you for the next game against the USA. See you later.